When it comes to Japanese cuisine, there is obviously no better place to experience it than where it is from, in the great land here in Japan. But unfortunately, not every single person watching this video can just casually hop on their next flight to Tokyo to experience the greatness of Japanese food. So what do they do instead? Naturally, you're going to be tapping on Google Maps to see where the closest Japanese establishment is in your country of residence. But how does that actually stack up to the food that you can get here in Japan? I asked myself this exact question while I was in Los Angeles last year, and so I wanted to get to the bottom of it. By trying out every single Japanese dish that you can buy in America with some help from some LA locals as well. So let's rewind the tape to six months ago where I set myself out on a quest to see if American Japanese food is as good or even potentially better than what you can get in Japan. Roll the tape back! So let's start off with some Japanese junk food. Right now we're in front of a Yoshinoya, which is a beef bowl type of chain that you see a lot of in Japan. There's like a top three of beef bowls. There's Sukiya, there's Matsuya, and then there's Yoshinoya. I'm more of a Sukiya fan myself, but uh, I've never seen or heard of a Yoshinoya being in America before. So let's find out, shall we? Let's go. As I stepped up to the counter to order, the familiar smell of beef was hitting the inside of my nostrils. But then I immediately noticed a big difference. So I got a fountain drink, which is definitely one thing you don't get. Wild cherry, I'm gonna try that. That's sweet. It's like corn syrup. Just, just pure corn syrup. Okay, I'm back in my hotel room because they were playing like weird gangster music and uh, I didn't want to get copyright claimed, but I managed to get a gyudon meal or I guess it's called like original gyudon beef. Of course as well, uh, because this is America, they gave us forks instead of chopsticks. Shake my head. And I got a full meal with the side. So the side is a six piece of gyoza, which is an interesting choice because gyoza is, oh, that's a weird colored gyoza right there. So I got a five piece gyoza on the side with a small drink. Yeah, good joke. This is a small fucking drink. This is Yoshinoya's gyudon with a side of five pieces of gyoza and a small drink. And this is a small size in Japan as well. Like this is roughly the same size. And I think that was like $8 by itself. A bit of a ripoff considering that a regular gyudon in Yoshinoya like probably set you back around like five, 600 yen. So uh, first of all, inflation, am I right? But hey, before we dive into some Japanese food, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Honkai Star Rail. I'm sure you've already heard of it by now, the winner of multiple game awards and developed by Hoyoverse. Honkai Star Rail is the free to play RPG filled to the brim with dazzling turn-based combat, extensive narrative, engaging strategic elements, and most importantly, absolute god tier character designs. I mean, look at all of these. God damn! With the world of Penaconi open to explore by entering through the realm of dreams. A city of revelry and hedonism, Full of fun and laughter lies a darker side with the looming crisis, drawing players into a web of conspiracy that players need to figure out in any means necessary. Along the way, players will encounter a number of brand new characters, such as this one right here, Black Swan, an elegant woman who practices divination using a crystal ball and cards, and someone who makes me glad that I have a thing for goth anime mommies. Or if that's not your thing, why not check out this other brand new character right here, Sparkle. Oh, look at her, she's so cute. A mischievous and unpredictable predictable girl with a helpful skill point restoration ability in battle. Listen, I appreciate a good kitsune mask on a cute anime girl, so this character is anime man approved. And there are so many more additions to this update, including wall walking, transformative mazes, new scenes, new enemies, and so much more. And if you log in for seven consecutive days, you'll get 20 Star Rail special passes for free. Now, I may not be good at math, but I can tell you that that is a goddamn deal. So check out Honkai Star Rail right now by clicking the link down in the description below and just for you guys, you'll get a bonus 50 Stellar Jade for using my link. You're welcome. Thank you to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring today's episode. Now let's go back to Joey being an absolute slob and sucking up all of the Japanese food in America. Why is American food so goddamn expensive, man? Jesus Christ, I'm broke after this. Also, I don't know about you guys, but with Japanese gyudons, they do not put steamed vegetables. Normally, the only vegetables they would put in with a gyudon is an like onion slices, which they have that at least, so I'll give them props for that, but they most certainly do not have cauliflower bits <laughs> in your gyudon. Who puts cauliflower in their gyudon, bro? All right, but the most important part is the meat. It's looking a little dry. Also, uh, not a whole lot of meat, but let's give it a 
a try. Thank you, Let's see how well this rice is cooked. First of all, I'm sorry, but Americans do not know how to cook white rice. Like this rice is so dry, it's insane. Like let alone the beef already is a little bit more dry than what you normally get at a Yoshinoya. Combine that with the dry rice, the flaky rice, and the dry or uh, steamed vegetables as well. I can see why this is considered a small drink because I'm probably going to need this to quench my thirst. All right, let's try this gyoza. So we got some packet soy sauce right here. Pew. Why is the soy sauce so sweet? Okay, first of all, I'm not expecting the gyoza or anything to be like top quality because, you know, at the end of the day, these gyudon places in Japan are considered junk food. But still, this is not good. I, uh, considering I paid like almost three times the price for this that I would in Japan, this is pretty horrendous, not gonna lie. Not to mention that I got a, a what was it again? A, a cherry Pepsi. Pepsi, which just tastes like hot sugar in water. I can see why this is considered junk food in Japan. I don't know how it's not considered junk food in uh, America because this does probably qualify. But yeah, overall, um, I would give American Yoshinoya or American Gyudon a uh, E tier. This is not good, especially for $12. This is not it. The Yoshinoya beef bowl ended up being Bruh. the worst start to my American Japanese culinary adventure, but I was a little more optimistic about my next stop. Typically in Japan, izakaya food is quite cheap and affordable, so not having the highest expectations of food quality was a given. But if the Yoshinoya earlier showed me anything, it's that food quality is sometimes a figment of one's imagination apparently. Let's see if this izakaya can help me regain my faith in American Japanese cuisine. I'm with the homie Violet. We're at a, a place called Bizan right here, right near Little Tokyo, and it's kind of like udon place. I mean, they have like a dedicated udon menu, but they also have a bunch of like izakaya style little snacks. So, and mac and cheese. There's a mac and cheese at this Japanese restaurant. But already a good sign was that the person who was bringing us to the table spoke Japanese, like in a Japanese accent accent so that's already a good sign because there's nothing more sus than going into a Japanese restaurant and there'd be no Japanese people working there. Do you like Japanese food? Are you a big fan? I feel like I eat more Japanese and Korean food than I do actually Mexican food and American. <laughs> So wow. yes, I do. No, I really do. I have a lot of Asian friends too, so yeah. they know the good spots in LA, sure. so it helps. It helps sure, too. Sure. I'm gonna for sure order the edamame. I feel like I always have to get edamame. I want to get the assort assorted tempura, mm. so I get vegetable and the shrimp. Well, they have bukkake, which is the normal one. Don't laugh. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally was laughing. <laughs> we pilot, so that. I didn't even think about that. You sick. Did that on purpose. You sick. <laughs> Saute green beans. Not much to say. I'm sure these are good. So these are ingen mame in Japanese. We do cook it like this as well. So it's legit. And then we have the gyoza as well. Hopefully these are better than the gyoza I got at Yoshinoya. I think the problem, the inside is good, but I think the, the problem might be the skin. It's a little thicker than normal. There's a little bit more of like a doughy texture to it. The inside though is good, but I think the skin, they can't do much about it because they probably get it from here. And it's probably not the same as the standards in Japan. What do you think? The meat is good. Yeah. I will say that the meat is good, mm. but I can't tell like any <laughs> yeah. or not. But it's good to me. I like it. Yeah. I will say yeah. I wish it was a little bit more crispier. Yeah, that's it. All right, main dish, my bukkake udon. Bukkake in Japanese means to pour all over. So now you know. I actually didn't know that. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know it meant pour all over. Yeah. I didn't know that's Or it meant like, you know, cover it. Yeah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. With bukkake udon, you're given a sauce that's separate from it, and then you can pour as much or as little as you want into it. You got the beef ball, which immediately looks a hundred times better than the Yoshinoya that we got. They got all the proper stuff as well. So they got like tenkasu, which is like the kind of leftover bits from tempura. You get the oroshi, which is the grated uh, radish. You got green onions, bonito flakes, seaweed, nori. All the ingredients are there. So now it's just a matter of how good is it? That's like an A tier. Wow. That's pretty good. The beef bowl? Well, I haven't tried it yet. I think you should try it. To compare it to Yoshinoya. I like the sauce. <laughs> the sauce is really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's like not even close. That is like 
what a beef ball should taste like. It's like Yoshinoya, but with flavor. We've got some tempura, classic Japanese food, even though it's not Japanese technically. But, you know, it's considered Japanese food now, so. I would say this is, it reminds me of like a burrito. You know, burritos are Mexican. Really? But no. I didn't no, know that. They're, they're from California. He, he thought chimichangas were Mexican. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay to be dumb. It's fine. It's really hot to f or, so this is great. But honestly, like same quality as what you can get in Japan. So if I ever feel like I miss Japan food, Japanese food, I can just come here. Just come here. I think this is so far the closest we've gotten to like actual authentic Japanese food. All right, we got yaki onigiri, which is the final one. I'm gonna see how you react. To it. I'm gonna like cut it in half. Really fresh. It's mm. hot. Not what I expected, but... Yeah, it's kind of like a sweet as well. Yeah, I really enjoy it. I wonder if it's like something I can try that's kind of traditional to like what I would get in Japan. It's worth trying at least one time. Oh. They even have a uh, hakuan as well, which is the pickled radish. Yeah, I just had some of my oh, yeah, so yeah, it was really good. Overall, it was exactly what I was expecting from an izakaya experience. Decent food, decent drinks, and good vibes with friends. So all things considered, I'd say the American izakaya experience was overall pretty solid. But my next stop would be another scary gamble for me, as we were now delving into the world of uncooked ingredients. And to help muster up the courage, I needed the help of America's biggest Japanese cuisine expert, or so he claims. Sushi in Japan? Not that good. Like, it's not that much better than American sushi. Are you serious right now? I'm being like 100% it's not for the video. <laughs> I promise you, sushi, we know how to do it. I think this is actually the first time I've ever come to a sushi train outside of Japan. Because I'm kind scared. Of, already, right, like, I mean, the, the setup is kind of similar. Like, we have the tablet uh, and we obviously have the train. One thing though, or actually a couple of things, these have lids on them. We don't have that. The lids are good because it's sanitary. We also don't have 17 year olds that lick it and put it back. That's true. You know what? Touche. Touche. We don't have this though, the disposing the plates thing. That's actually a pretty cool system in my opinion. I guess it counts which plates you've had the moment you put it in and then yeah. that adds on to it. Because in Japan, we would keep the plates on the table and then when you get the bill, the person would come over and they would scan all the plates because different plates have different price points on them. Well, if we're being smart then, mm. the same way when you're in Japan, you you shouldn't pull it off. Order off the tablet. We should order off the we tablet. We should order off the tablet. Hey, Although maybe, I am kind of curious. We should pull one off. We can get some watermelon. <laughs> it's probably really good. Yeah. You know what? Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right. You know what? Let's start off with a Japanese tradition. Watermelon. Oh, okay. Did, you... Did I grab two of them? Oh no, you're not supposed to grab the thing. You're supposed to just take the plate out. Oh. See, normally you they just take the whole thing American, in. Yeah. Our American customs. Sorry. <laughs> That was actually a really good watermelon. <laughs> that was a great watermelon. One big difference between rolls and sushi in America is how sauced up we love it. That's like drowning in sauce. It's dude. got two different sauces. In Japan, the chef put like a little dab of soy sauce and they're yep. like, don't put any more. Yep. Not here. What about the wasabi? Is the wasabi any good here? Oh, that does not look good. The wasabi should not look this dry. Let's start off with the Philly roll. Okay. It's cream cheese, salmon, and what else is in there? Uh, fake What's... crab, imitation crab. Oh, an, avoc an avocado. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> the cream cheese is so overpowering. That's the best part is how thick it gets with the cream cheese. <laughs> God damn. This is a Texan roll, you said? Yeah, this is how they do it. So there's a spicy sauce and a mayo, some kind of flakes. Is it good? It's so good. <laughs> It's a, lot of, it's a lot of sauce. You can't taste the fish, that's what makes it good. This is like the lowest quality fish you can buy. That's why the sauce makes it so good. Now we can score our first point. Oh, hell yeah. Please do the honors. Hold on. Shoo! That's way too fun. You want to grab that? Oh, yeah, cumin, sure. tuna. What's your favorite salmon to go to? Usually, there's like, what the hell? That was quick. Wait, that was so fast. There it comes. Wait, that was Shoo. so fast. Noise. This looks like AI made the roll because it's not, it's not even like it's not even like molded on it. It's yeah. just like see that's that's weak. Yeah. A good sushi, it should be like infused with the rice, not, not, not just placed on top. This looks like what oh, no. uh, if if they had sushi in. <laughs> <laughs> Turn off the fucking camera. <laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> Struggling a bit then. It's really good. It's cold. Yeah, I wish I had more cream cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Get your ass in there, boy. I think for a cheap place, that was acceptable. It's like as good as Japan. As good as you're probably gonna get at like a cheap sushi place in Japan. 
But one thing I can say though, at least with Japanese food, right, is, is like, you know the saying, feed the eye before you feed the stomach? That sushi right there looked like a video game item. If they had sushi in like Minecraft, that's what it would have looked like. It didn't load in all the way. Yeah, it was like low poly sushi, yeah. you know? And then we got dashi olive salmon. Wait, olive. it's right there. It's right there. Dashi olive. I don't see the dashi or the olive. It just looks like salmon with a lemon. <laughs> all right, I think what we have to do is we got to get a little fancy here and like dab it mm. with the... Oh, I see it coating a bit. Get that lemon juice on it. I can taste the olive. It's a lot stronger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's definitely, they definitely squeeze an olive on it at the end. I think I actually prefer that over normal salmon. Just because there's more taste to it? Yeah. You can tell the salmon's kind of low quality. We gotta take what we get here. It's also cheap. What's good to old gun cam? Oh, wait, what the fuck's happening? Miami Beach! <laughs> this is so big for us. I'm Mutenmaru and I'm on vacation. Oh shit, by inserting sushi plate? We gamify our food here. Yeah. If you walk away without eating more, they kill him. <laughs> It's like an ISIS beheading video. <laughs> I wonder if my favorite one's here. What's your favorite? I don't know what it's in. It is in English. So in Japanese, I can probably translate. It's mejiro. Oh, fish. <laughs> nice. Okay, so this is like... Oh, Lord. This is classic. This is, this is actually what I think of when I think of American sushi. It's usually you'll order like something called like a ninja roll. And it'll just be like up with sauce. <laughs> and you won't even know what you're eating. It tastes all kind of the same, yeah. which is relatively good. I've never been like physically assaulted by a mixture of flavors before. I feel violated off that. You like it? Like a good violation. Like, uh, what's a good violation? Like, uh... <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> it's actually, there's, there is none, I would say, is my answer. Premium American beef. It's just beef. It's just a big old piece of beef. Hey, no way, we're trying that. Okay, first of all, false advertising. That thing is Hold like... Hold picture. That thing is... Look how, look how thick this boy is. It's like this thick. Meanwhile... Also way more raw than I thought it would be. Yeah, it's like blue steak, bro. They barely seared it. Would you like to try this one first? I'm down to get food poisoning for your video. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep, make sure to get a garlic. Oh, that smells horrible. Oh my god, that smells so... If I get sick tomorrow, you'll not. Bruh. Yeah, this ain't it, Chief. That's, that's, uh, that's not sushi. So it's like, the meat's cold. It's chewy. It it's chewy. It's not premium. And then all you taste the entire time is the one fried garlic. That's it's like, that's all I'm eating. <laughs> Might as well just give me a piece of fried garlic. <laughs> That's all you taste. Let me just see what they got to offer here. And these are guncons? No. What'd you say? Guncon. I thought you were saying like Australian, like goon. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, they got wow. sea urchin. We have to try it. I love sea urchin. But like, oh, they but yeah, say but about American sea urchin. sea urchin. They say about sea urchin is like, it's the, the worst food to have a bad version. Bad sea urchin is like, Taking a mouthful of salt water. What is good sea urchin in that example? Good, oh, good sea urchin is like, it has the kind of like ocean flavor, but it also has like, it's like creamy. It doesn't stick around in the mouth for too long. The texture is like better than most. Like, cause like bad sea urchin is like, is like salty snot. Yes. Good sea urchin is like salty snot, but good. All right, here's a snow crab. All right. At least they give you a good piece of crab. They must just have a frozen batch of these. <laughs> Don't say that, ruin the immersion. <laughs> this is definitely fresh. Uh, you know, o only the best that could have suggest all of them. Oh, it's delicious. Delicious? I mean, it's snow crab. I mean, it's kind of hard to f crab. Unless it's like imitation crab. The crab did all the work. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord. Visually, that's like a three. A lot of rice in it. Rule number one of how to identify a good piece of like, uh, uni guncon is that if you can see the rice, that's a bad sign. Dude, it smells awful. Should we halve it? No, I think I think you should enjoy this. Are you sure? No, this is really important for the video. I really want to like share this experience with you though. Nah. <laughs> so normally, right, when you take sushi, you would try and dip this in the soy sauce. But because it's rice underneath, the rice just gets wet and none of the soy sauce actually goes onto the uni. So what you do is you take a piece of gutty and you dip it in soy sauce and then you use it like a paintbrush. It's kind of badass. And then now you have the soy sauce on the actual uni and the rice is untouched. And you still get the full flavor. Come on, good thoughts, good thoughts. No, it's not that bad. It's no, it can't be that bad. Come on, America, number one. That was... Probably the worst piece of uni I've had in my life. Where did we go wrong? Opening up this restaurant. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. You know how I was telling you about like, the texture is the, the number one thing and the taste is the number one thing? For one, the texture was horrendous. Like way too slimy. Dude, I'm not even gonna f I smell it on your breath and you're <laughs> It, it is messing with me. Get to that snow crab. Yeah, I need to get to the snow crab right now. I need, I need a pal you need palate, palate cleanser. <laughs> oh, that's so much better. Everything else has been like, 
acceptable to pretty good. That uni though, holy f Yeah, we need four more plates to save Muten Mara. Grab that, I wanna try it. Which one? Eel. It's like kind of a risky one. To be fair, I'm not worried about this because it's cooked. Can I ask a dumb question? Is eel sauce made with eel? The answer is no. This is the editor's moment to make Joey look really dumb. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna say no, so please confirm. Right here. Let's try the tour first. That is oily, dude. You can you can see the. Yeah. You, I can see my reflection in this thing. Right. That is probably the best thing I've had. That was, that was amazing. That was good. good. I dare, I'm, da I'm damn near call it S tier. I'll give that an A. When it comes to sushi, I am a snob. All right, well, let's try. I it. do like eel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Come oh, on, yeah. man. That's probably the best thing I've had. Actually. That was great. That was great. Eel. You did it right. There we go. That's what I want. <laughs> That's the good stuff right here. Too good. Mm. You gotta grab that. Real crab California roll, which Real is very rare. Crab. Okay. California roll, I think it's the most popular American sushi roll. I believe it's called a California roll because it's called a CA roll, which is crab avocado. Well, I thought the Californians were like, we got this shit. No, we we no. own this shit now. It's just because it's crab avocado, CA, California. Why don't they do that with every state? Texas roll? It's got TX. Yeah, it's got Get there. Toro. Uh huh. And? and Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> it's very little flavor. You're mostly just chewing on something that's kind of fun to chew on, and then it has a little soy sauce hit. I don't get why these are as popular as they are. I think we can uh, confidently say that kurazushi, it's all right. There are some dishes that American kurazushi has nailed, and then there are some like the uni where you should probably take it off the menu. It's still sushi, yeah? It's still sushi. Not that much different than Japan. Not that much different. Again, some things they they kind of do up to par with Japan, and some things they do a lot worse. But I think overall, it's as authentic of a sushi experience I think as you can get. Across the board, it is way uglier though. Yes. Like the rolls themselves, like it's just a piece of stuff. Like the nigiri is just hanging on it because they don't got someone back there who's been here 15 years. No, no. And if they do, they're not getting paid enough. I came expecting like you know American sushi. It's like it's about as good as Japanese sushi. Yeah. I didn't expect to have as many misses though. Dude, the honors. Oh shit. We got two more plates. Chuck them in. Juan, that plane count, it's gonna hit 15. Bam. Sushi plates have been inserted. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's a spicy meatball. We got the recipe back. Can QR code. Oh fuck. Wait, don't disappear, please. Oh. Oh wait, I got oh, it. It's going, it's going, oh, it's going. Oh, 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 what the f Yeah, it comes out. I got Batman. <laughs> With like so much advertisement on the bottom, that's crazy. <laughs> really good looking. <laughs> Thank you to Ludwig for coming on and uh, teaching me the ways, the Japanese ways of sushi in America. Uh, Rigato goes Ayamas for having me. <laughs> well, that was genuinely surprising. I think it's safe to say that American sushi has definitely improved over the years. And although I managed to win this particular bet, the gambling was going to continue at our next place. Another staple of Japanese cuisine that has taken the world by storm. And after a stomach full of raw fish, I was not exactly looking forward to this one. We're here right now just opposite the street from Little Tokyo in a place called Ming, or this one was actually recommended by Alex, my producer. And I want to know just how much ramen has, I guess, evolved since the last time I had it. Because I had ramen once in LA, the first time I ever came here about six or seven years ago in Little Tokyo, and it was not that great. So I'm hoping this place is a little bit better. Let's go. We want to try out just like the basic, the most basic ramen that you can get anywhere in Japan and anywhere in LA. So let's go with the shoyu ramen. First off, the prices are... They're expensive. It's $17 for a ramen. There is a Michelin star ramen in Shinjuku. I don't even think the Michelin star place was this expensive. But again, this is LA prices we're talking about, so can't be helped, I guess. Honestly, these are prices I'm pretty used to seeing anywhere outside of Japan, so the idea, it's all about the taste. Okay, so I got the shoyu ramen. Honestly, looks pretty damn good. Really, really close. So you have all the essentials. Obviously, you got your moyashi, your bean sprouts, you got your menma, bamboo shoot, your two slices of chashu, half tamago, piece of nori, some uh, seaweed right here, and some veggies and spring rolls. There are a number of factors when it comes to ramen to determine how good it is. Number one is the broth. So let's have a little sip of this broth, shall we? All right, nice oily texture right there. Thank you, Cool. That's nice. That's not too like heavy. Let's try out these noodles though, shall we? So they're a little thinner than usual, I've noticed, but same color, same consistency. Let's try this out. I prefer my own noodles a little bit thicker, but 
these uh, thinner noodles right here still have a really nice texture, really nice consistency, and it goes really well with the broth as well. Let's try this char siu actually. Ramen's really improved. This is like 10 times, 100 times better than the ramen I first had in Little Tokyo. I see you. You're getting a little bit better. I respect that. Try the menma as well, the bamboo shoot. I love these things. The flavoring is good. Menma's a little bit salty, but that's a preferential thing. Some people really like it salty. I'm down to finish this which is a, a big compliment to give to LA Ramen. Again, because the worst ramen I ever had in my life was in LA, in Little Tokyo, like not far from here, six, seven years ago. So in these six, seven years, dog, LA has definitely improved in their ramen game. This is actually really good. Like you could serve this to Japanese people in Japan and I think they'll be satisfied with it. So enough of my commentary. I'm gonna finish this right now. All right, so I just finished eating at Men O. You know, initially, the first couple of bites were actually pretty good, but this is very common with a lot of ramen places, even in Japan. The more you eat it, the more your opinion about the dish starts to change. So in the case with Men O, I didn't finish it. It was a lot of food. Two, every time I eat more of the noodles, it kind of left this like chalky, texture in my mouth uh, that's usually as a result of the noodles maybe not being cooked through well enough but i mean that also happens in japan as well i'm just personally not a fan of that so that's that usually in japan they give you i guess different choices as to whether the ramen is like hard or like crunchy or anything like that in this place obviously there was no difference broth in and of itself was good for the first couple of sips but then obviously the oil started to take over quite a bit and it became a little bit harder to stomach and that's probably another reason why look I'm not gonna say that was the best ramen I've ever had in the world, obviously, but I think, again, I'm comparing it to the first bowl of ramen I ever had in Little Tokyo. Compared to that, yes, this is definitely an improvement, but I do still want to see, I guess, the ceiling of ramen raised a little bit higher here in Los Angeles. I don't know, maybe I didn't go to like the best ramen place in Los Angeles. You guys in the comments can let me know what your favorite place is. But yeah, I think uh, my stomach is full with ramen for this lunchtime. But now, I would be lying if I said I didn't save the best for last, as this final stop would truly show the potential of what America can do with Japanese cuisine. And what better way to top this all off than by sharing it with America's biggest weeb himself. It's his recommendation. He says that this place is the shit, so we're about to find out. I'm telling you, this is like as close to the Japanese level as you can get. Well, I mean, I'm already seeing a good sign on this menu here that says, our cuts are flown directly from Japan to your table, never frozen, ensuring the guests experience the best quality Wagyu in traditional Japanese style. That's, a, that's a tall order. If this place ends up sucking, we know who to blame. 100%. Not the restaurant. I'll take it. <laughs> it's my fault, 100%. I mean, starting on the left-hand side, you guys have the roast beef with our house-made sour cream sauce. Then on the far right, you have our dried beef with Parmesan and arugula, and then you have the beef tartar in the middle. That smells delicious. Mmm. So far, so good, huh? This is already very Japanese, considering the fact that, again, it's all about the, the philosophy of you feed the eyes before you feed the stomach. If it looks pristine and it looks good, it's presented nicely, that's how you know it's gonna be good. The raw beef is insane. The tartar? No, tartar. Yeah, so this is very Japanese right here, the tartar beef. It's called tataki in Japanese. Marinated too. Yeah. That's so good. That's super good. I'm silently judging your chopstick skills, by the way. Why, is it bad? No, it's good, actually. Better than a lot of people I've seen. You're holding it correctly as well? Yep, you're moving it correctly. That's how you know, man. That's how you know it's not lost Japan, but. So far, appetizer, very, very good. Two cuts here. Oh, yeah. One of the leanest if I wagyu beefs we have. That's the best sound, isn't it? I'm gonna have this like so. Ooh, look at that. Thank you. I mean, how could you hate that? How can you hate that? <laughs> yeah. Every single meat from here on out is gonna be better. Another your downside, is it gets really fucking hot in here. It does. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got some garlic rice with what looks like a little bit of like cooked tataki inside of it as well. You definitely need this though, because like all of the meats are like that. <laughs> you need like a palate cleanser for all the fatty goodness of the Wagyu. So this is like perfect for that. Honestly, like for, for the little that we've had already, like I can see why this is your favorite place. To be fair though, it is pretty difficult to like it's all about the cuts like as long as you get the good cuts which so yeah. far we have and it's only going to get better from here like unless the chef like completely sucks at cooking it here which i'm sure they won't be then like it's pretty difficult to like majorly 
I think, yeah, it's the, it's the meat carrying it for sure. Yeah. But that's the whole point. You can't really get it everywhere else. Sure, you know? that is true. Like, that is one aspect of uh, this experience that has ruined me a little bit. It's like, that, like, I don't know, regular sirloin. I'm like, eh. <laughs> it's not as marbled. It's not as textured. Yeah. It's sure not as good. Look at the sheen on this. Look at that. The oil just dripping off of it. This is going to be bomb. I can already tell. Oh. Oh. Yazoyaki A5 Wagyu Sirloin, one of the most marble, richest tender cuts. This sauce is special too. It's sukiyaki marinade sauce, which is sweeter than regular marinade sauce we have here. Yeah, yeah. That's why this time we're doing with egg sauce. Oh my god. Awesome, thank you. So we got the egg and everything as well with that. Now look at that. Oh my lord. You know this is gonna be good. How is it? Damn. Yeah? Yeah. And you've been to the place that invented it, huh? I've been to the place that invented yeah. it. Yeah. That's good. It's like maple syrup. I don't know how to describe yeah. it. It's very sweet. The egg pod, definitely, they've added like a little bit of like a froth to it, which like I'm kind of indifferent against. It can be fine sometimes, but like, I think what struck me the most was definitely the this, uh, sauce that they put on this. It's definitely a lot sweeter than usual, which I wasn't expecting. Like Japan does have like sweeter sauces, but like, that one was like, oh like, yeah, extra sweet. I describe it like eating a pastry almost, especially with the egg as well. Like, yeah. yeah, it does kind of feel like you're eating like a meat pastry, which sounds horrible, but it was actually really, really good. It's delicious. A little gift from the chef for you guys. This is our Toro Wagyu A5 sushi. It has a little caviar and uni on it. As a guy who doesn't eat seafood, I know that that is like one of the smelliest, right? It is like probably one of the most divisive. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people who don't like it for the texture or the smell or the taste. People who love it, love it. I love the shit out of it. What, we try it at the same time. I don't want your reaction to guy to cloud mine. You know what I mean? Okay, okay, sure. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Considering that I'm not throwing up, there's an aftertaste to it, but it's yeah. not like a like a sea aftertaste. Yeah, it's like a salty aftertaste, right? Yeah, it almost feels like dirt. I don't know how to <laughs> describe it, but not in a bad way. It's like dirt, but in a good way. I really liked it. Okay, so for one. I mean, the meat was going to be good. I think everyone understood that. Yeah. But the uni is like incomparable to the one I had at Kurazu. These are marinated if I wagyu. The first two are round beef, right? Okay. We have two more on this plate. One is rum, round yeah. beef. Ichibo, medium party one. This is really good too. Kamenoko, cut from the thigh, back from the leg. Partiest one on this plate is ribushin if I wagyu ribeye. Look at the glean on that. Bro, it'll be like lean cut and it's still so, it's still so sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good too. Different from gum. So, uh, look at that. Holding it for the camera as well. Yeah, That's a profession. Well. You know this going to be busting. Let's see if this holds up to the Chateaubriand. That's a good piece of meat though. Oh. Oh my God. Oh, it's so soft. Oh. God damn. God damn. God damn. God damn. I take it back, this shit's fire. I'm so happy now. Well, I think, Hassan, I can say with confidence, this place, just as good, if not better, than some Yakiniku places I've been to in Japan. Your recommendation was legit. So Hassan has good taste in Japanese food, confirmed. You get what you paid for, hopefully, and this place definitely delivers. So there you have it, the American Japanese experience. Overall, I will say that the quality varied from absolutely horrendous to incredibly amazing. But what I can say is that America is definitely getting better at making Japanese food. Of course, at the end of the day, this is all just my opinion and my personal taste on food. But rest assured, Americans, your Japanese food is pretty all right. Obviously, I couldn't try every single Japanese dish, and I'm sure you're all screaming at the TV going, what about that one, Joey? But I think I managed to at least cover the wider spectrum of Japanese food that is readily available in a city like Los Angeles. So a big thank you to all of my content creator friends who helped me out on this video. Check them out on screen right now, and thank you for watching. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you all in the next one. Ciao,